publishing news if let's that's a good end, thing or a bad thing. Let's end with the q and I think. Sachs, what the fuck is going on with Facebook and Australia and climate change and this is insanity. Yeah, so I think what's going on in Aust- Australia is is contemplating a law that would require Facebook and Google and I think just those two companies to essentially pay royalties for hyperlinks to 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 news publications. And I think this is mostly at the behest of some powerful uh newspaper magnates down there. I think like Rupert Murdoch and I love folks the way like you that. say magnates. It's like Well, they real- are. I mean, you know, um <laughs> And so, uh, it, but 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 this issue is, is going to be very closely watched by Europe and maybe even the U.S. Um, it's basically a tra- uh, like a a wealth transfer from Google and and Facebook to the traditional media and to traditional publishers. Um, this is an issue where I actually um, side with with Zuckerberg and Facebook on this. I mean, I kind of throw up a little bit in my mouth saying that, but. Um, uh, but uh, no, but look, it, Tim Berners Lee has come out and said that it, it could really interfere with the open internet and the World Wide Web if you start to tax hyperlinks. I mean, historically, hyperlinks and t- the titles on hyperlinks were, um, were 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 fair use. You could you could use those things without violating somebody else's copyright or need to pay them a royalty. And so I think that it's it's bizarre to me that that Facebook and, and Google wouldn't now be able to use hyperlinks. And I'm kind of worried about where that goes. Yeah. And uh, you know I so well, Facebook so, Facebook yeah. said that they're not going to publish links now for Australian news. And then but then they followed that up with they were also going to start uh, dismantling any anti climate change content. I don't know if that's just just in Australia. Well, there's labeling. So there's another thing going on, which is they've decided now to label any posts involving climate change, which is part of the whole censorship debate. And um, and so separate yeah, issue. I mean, well, it's separate but related in the sense that the traditional media is cheering on censorship, but then when Facebook es- essentially uh, censors these links because they don't want to pay royalties to the traditional media. Then the traditional media is up in arms. And so they're very selective in how they, how they view these issues. My, my principle is very consistent, which is I want an open internet. I'm against censorship in all of its forms. And I, and I, you know, and I'm, I'm worried that this new Australian law could really lead to some, lead to an overall re- reduction or shutdown. Here's what's really, I think, going on is that. With fair use, the doctrine of fair use, it's a four-part test. Uh, you're a lawyer, obviously, you know all this, Sachs, but to sort of educate people in the audience who don't, there's no specific uh, number of characters, no specific percentage of the original work that you uh, can use you to clear yourself of fair use. Fair use is a test. When it goes before a judge, a judge looks at this four-part test, the percentage of the work you used, is the public confused? Um, is there some educational or criticism version of it? So if you were to use 10% of this podcast and you were to wrap it with, you know, put us in a picture window and you were 50% of it and there was no confusion that you were commenting on this, that would be fair use. Or if you were to use it in an educational system and if you were monetizing it. Now, if you were to just clip our podcast, like this one website clipped the podcast and made 60 clips of it, took our file, and I sent them a cease and desist, actually, and said, hey, don't do this. We're doing it ourselves. They fought us, and they said, we're fans. And I said, I don't care if you're fans or not. You're not linking back. You're not giving us credit, and you're doing 60 clips. If you want to do one or two clips and you want to comment on it, that's fine. But you can't take all 60 clips and make a 60-clip version of this. Um, And so fairness is in the word fair use. The problem with Zuckerberg and with how Google has used journalist content is they are clipping out specific sections of it and putting it in something called one box on Google. So many of you might have said, how many people, you know, how many pounds are in, you know, whatever, or what time is this TV show on? And then the content that was made by The Ringer or The New York Times gets clipped and they put just that section, David with an algorithm and they give you the answer. So you don't need to go visit that website. This is tipping over into what I would call unfair use because you're okay, eliminating the point. person linking. Now, let me finish. Yeah. If it was just the URL and you didn't pull the headline, you didn't pull the abstract, and you didn't pull the photo, that would be fine. There is a very easy solution to this, which is if you wanna pull the link and the headline, you pay $0. But if you wanna pull anything else, 
a uh, hundred characters, et cetera, you need to get a license from that person unless you are doing actual criticism. So there's nothing to stop anybody in Australia right now from taking a screenshot of a New York Times story or an Australian, you know, newspaper story and writing some commentary on it. You just can't wholesale take everything. And so what we're seeing here is a real time negotiation between private parties into what is fair. And I think Google has a really rich history of sharing revenue. Uh, the app store, they give 70% to app developers, YouTube, they give 55% to creators. And with AdSense, they let you put AdSense on your website, and they give you 68 cents on the dollar or something in that range, they never actually disclose the exact percentage, but that's what I'm told it is. Facebook has given $0 to Instagram users, $0 to WhatsApp users, $0 to Facebook folks, they're too greedy. And what Facebook needs to do is either not use the content, or come up with some reasonable payment and come to an agreement with these folks who are now banding together. And they're realizing the traffic we get from Facebook and Google is not worth what they're taking away from with us, which is all that revenue that, you know, they earned in the free market. And so this is a free market debate. And I think the government should stay out of it to a certain extent, and let the free market work, which is all publishers should get together in the United States and confront Facebook and say, pay us unless you use anything more than the headline. But Jason, I think these things are interconnected though, right? On the one hand, if you if you have an economic stake in distribution of content, but then you're also then going to decide under, you know, a, an opaque definition what is truth or not truth, you all of a sudden just become, I mean, the purest form definition of a publisher. Right? And I think it just becomes a very treacherous place for both Facebook and Google to end up in. So it's almost well, Google's paying the bell, by the way. Yeah, no, you're right. Google's paying for it. Facebook has decided not to, but Facebook uh, they said something like only four percent of their 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 posts involve this kind of content. So it's just not a big deal for them the way it is for for Google. Well, I think and it I, is and, a big and, deal for Facebook. They're just trying to make a point here because Zuckerberg's a, yeah yeah, you know, and they're they're being they're hardcore. being. They're being overly heavy handed in their response. Yeah. There's no question about it. They're, they're throwing their weight around. It doesn't look good. But I'm not defending Facebook. I'm defending the principle. I mean, look, if this Australian principle were used, you wouldn't have the Drudge Report. You wouldn't be able to create a site yeah. of, of news links. No, you I could mean, if it was commentary. You could put the link not, and write Drudge commentary. Not, it's when you just rip the links. People are objecting understood, to ripping the links report, without any commentary. Judge Report right. re rewrites the headline, puts his own spin on it, and then links. He would never get caught into this, and there is no publication that would ever object. What they're objecting to is taking the photo, taking the first paragraph, and the the the, the synapsis is 30 or 40% of the value. And so Facebook is a better, and Twitter is, with their algorithms are better front pages than the New York Times front page. Well, why isn't this applying to Twitter then? I, I think it will ultimately. They'll, they'll go there as well. Um, I think this will become the test case, which is if you want to take more than just the headline or, or, and like, you know, ba basically that's it, or the URL, if you want to have that little snippet, pay us. Pay us something. It doesn't have to be a lot. But this could right. actually solve if these networks that are making tens to hundreds of millions of billions of dollars, if they just said, you know what, 1% to the news organizations to keep them viable, just like anybody else would pay in a licensing fee for terrestrial why radio. Is it, well, why, is, why is the Australian government setting the price? And why are they only applying this to Google and Facebook? Well, th I think they're going to go right down the line. I think it's just a starting point. But to my point, I said earlier is I don't think the government needs to do this. Right. I think the news organizations on mass should get together yeah. and put their foot down and say no. And if well, they did, I mean, they would get paid. It sounds, it sounds like what the government should do is clarify what fair use entails. Yeah, just and a then link. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's a link plus a title. I mean, look, it, it's it's never just a link, right? It's a hyperlink plus the, the like, snippet plus the word. Yeah, exactly. Yes, the so, snippet is so, the issue. Right. So. so fine. So the government should clarify what fair use is, and then if Google and Facebook or whoever want more, they got to go negotiate for it. Exactly. But but Australia is doing more than that. They're setting the price. And they're limiting their overreaching policy just to Google and Facebook because they know that if they applied it to everybody, it by the way, we the do internet. that. We we already do this in the United States, David, with local carriage of uh, news organizations on terrestrial TV. So we already have we already mix it up with the FTC doing this with licenses and, and the public good. So it's the extent. I think the other thing that you know is going to happen with all of this is like on the other on the other side of this, the actual media organizations themselves that theoretically could benefit from this are frankly just going out of business anyways. I, I, there's a 
you know, there's a Wall Street Journal alert um, for the owner of the LA Times who's about to sell the Times. Like, it's very likely that the Times in four or five years doesn't even exist. So I don't really know where all of this goes, except that, you know, everybody's just going to be an individual person blogging and tweeting whatever opinion <laughs> they want, right? So there'll be no money to pay anybody because it won't really matter. But what will be left is then these rules on arbitration of fact and fiction. And I think that that's where we're going to end up. That's going to be a crazy place. Because then those folks, those folks then really are the puppet masters. Yeah, I, 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 I agree that these traditional publications have like a fundamental business model problem. And it's not going to be solved. Like, I think there's a, uh, like a misplaced blame on Facebook and, and Google. I mean, the fundamental problem with all these publications are you go search for a news article on something and there's like, 10 versions of the same thing or more, a hundred versions. And, you know, when, when newspapers, we used to have thousands of newspapers all across the country and they had a, a local geographic monopoly. But once it all got digitized and moved online, you realize how much redundancy there was. You have yep. thousands of reporters creating the exact same thing and there needs to be consolidation. It doesn't make sense to have a hundred articles. Not, not only that, but a point we made last time, which is, um, you know, facts have largely commoditized or most facts like, you know, remember, we used to open the newspaper and look at what the stock market prices were. We, we opened the newspaper and looked at the sports scores. We looked at what happened in this place and this place. Facts about events, facts about the prices of things, facts about sports scores. That's all completely commoditized. I mean, that's like 90% of the content of what people used to read the newspaper for has gone online. And so as we talked about last time, newspapers and publications of the like have largely moved into, you know, different sorts of narrative and um, you know, it's created a, a marketplace that has a lot more competition because anyone can write that as we are, we're seeing with Substack and Medium and as we're seeing with our own podcast, and we're seeing with our own podcast. Yeah. And I think that's, um, this feels to me like, you know, I went to a media conference back in 2008 and there was this huge battle, uh, between Google and, um, Viacom and I, I was at the conference and I think Larry Page was on stage or someone what, or Eric Schmidt was on stage and the Viacom CEO got up and he's like, when are you going to start paying us for our content? And uh, I think that that, and he really screamed at him in a room of like 800 people. And I feel like that same kind of point of view has persisted until there's finally some legislation that they feel kind of gets them justice. Meanwhile, the world has passed them by. And, uh, you know, I think this, uh, this will be kind of some transitory uh, legislation that ultimately the content is going to democratize anyway, and the content creation is going to dem 